Greetings everybody, so today we're going to be taking a look at probably the silliest thing I've ever come up with while messing around with differentials and that's taking a differential dx and raising it to another differential dx and why stop there? Why not keep adding more and more powers and perhaps on non teal infinity and we're going to be seeing if we can even make sense of this and at the end of the video you might have seen from the thumbnail we're going to be slapping an integral sign in front of this and yeah seeing if this even makes sense so we are not prepared for this beast yet let's start with something slightly more simpler and that's just taking a look at dx raised to the dx. Now to figure out how to interpret this even, we need to understand what dx is. Now dx you can think of as being a quantity that just approaches zero. So you can kind of rewrite this as being the limit as some quantity delta x approaches zero um, of delta x but raised to the delta x. So this is how you can think of dx. We can write it in terms of this limit. And let's see what this limit evaluates to. If you've seen this limit before, you know it evaluates to one. But um, if you haven't seen it before, maybe we'll do it down here quickly. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches zero. We'll take it from the positive side to be precise of x raised to the x power. Okay, and what can we do with this? We can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero plus of e to the natural log of x to the x. And the nice thing with doing this is we can bring this x at the top down to the front of the natural log. So this simplifies to the limit as x approaches zero plus of e to the x natural log of x. Now, since the exponential function is continuous, we can bring the limit into the exponent, and this becomes e to the limit as x approaches zero plus of x raised to the natural log of x. Now, this guy over here, we can actually employ some L'Hopital's rule. It might not be in the form infinity over infinity or zero divided by zero. Uh, it is in the form though, zero, times infinity. So we can actually modify this a little bit by rewriting as e to the limit as x approaches zero plus. We keep the natural log on top, but we divide instead by one over x. And notice this is now an infinity divided by infinity situation. So let's employ L'Hopital's rule that this is e to the limit as x approaches zero plus. Differentiating the top, we get one over x. Differentiating the bottom, we get minus one over x squared. And all that's left for us to do is perhaps a couple of simplifications. This is the limit as x approaches zero plus. This becomes minus x because it can cancel x squared and x. And as x approaches zero, well, this just becomes e to the zero, essentially. Um, so this is e to the zero, which is one. So we've just shown that the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta x to delta x um, is equal to one. We used um, different labels over here, but essentially the limits are the same. Okay, so once we have this now, we can understand the dx to the dx as being exactly one. Okay, that's nice. So we can do funny things like integrating um, dx raised to the dx um, dx or something like that because this guy over here that's just the one so this becomes x plus some arbitrary constant c okay that's nice but if you look hard enough since dx to the dx is precisely one well we can also do things like integrating dx we know how to integrate dx that's just x plus c but notice we can raise dx to the first power so dx raised to the first power is still dx but notice we can replace that one with dx to the dx. And so this guy over here also evaluates to x plus c because this exponent is exactly one. And yeah, hopefully you can see the chain reaction coming over here. Because notice this whole guy over here is a dx, okay. But notice dx is exactly this thing. So we can kind of put this guy inside of its, its own definition and this becomes dx raised to the dx. But dx is this whole um, triple dx thing over here so we get this and yeah this is where the infinite tower comes from kind of but notice there's always an odd number of dx so it could have dx um, dot 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 dx but this happens over here seven times or in general you would want it to happen 2k plus one times where k is a natural number and of course you can include zero as well Okay, and what happens if this tower had an even number of dx's? Well, it wouldn't be dx anymore, it would just be one. So for example, one is equal to dx raised to the dx, uh, which is equal to dx raised to dx raised to dx raised to dx, or in general, just dx 
uh, raised to the power of dx, uh, but this is an even number, so perhaps 2k. Okay, and there's actually some simpler notation for this. You can write this using the tetration notation. So for instance, this guy over here, since there's 2k plus 1 dx's piled on top of each other, you can write instead of a dx, but raised to the 2k plus 1, you want to tetrate it. So you, what you do is you can kind of put that in the front. You can search up the tetration notation um, if you want to read more on that. But this funny expression over here is how you would represent it. And same for down here. You'd write it as 2k um, tetrate and dx. Okay, so we've basically made sense of these funny little towers. So in the end, we can conclude that if we take the integral of dx raised to the dx, dot 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 raised to the dx, but this happens an odd number of times, then this guy over here, since we know if it's an odd number of times, then it's just simply the integral of dx. So this is integral of dx, but that's just x plus c. And what happens if we have an even number, so if we integrate now, but we have an even number of dx's, so 2k times, then it doesn't really make sense to integrate. So one, you would need an extra dx over here actually. And yes, since this whole entire thing down here is one, you would also recover the integral of dx, which is x plus c. So if you tetrate and you have an odd number of dx's, then you don't need to put an extra dx at the end because the whole thing is already dx. But if you have an even number, you would need an extra dx for it to make sense. So we've basically covered what we wanted to cover today. We figured out how to make sense of these arbitrarily large tetrations of dx, which is something pretty silly to look at. So I'm not actually too sure if this has been done by someone else before, but yeah, just kind of came up with this while messing in around with how to um, put together dx's in funny ways and whatnot. And you can actually check out my other videos where I've done similar things. So links to those will be in the description, for example. We can integrate the sine of dx as well. And there's also another video where I integrate some really exotic expression involving dx's. So yeah, you can find those on my channel as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until the next one have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone in the next one.